Need furniture and want it now? Well, if you really want to save money, come to People's Furniture today. At People's Furniture, we have furniture to suit every taste and budget and can offer you immediate delivery on such great savings as these. A five-piece glass dinette, people priced at $249. A contemporary three-piece living room, people priced at $599. A four-piece bedroom set, people priced at $399. A People's Furniture showroom is nearby, in the Bronx on 3rd Avenue, Southern Boulevard and East Fordham Road, Brooklyn on Fulton Street, Manhattan on West 14th Street, and in Queens on Main Street, Flushing. I'm Cy Sperling, president of Hair Club for Men. If you've ever thought about doing something about your thinning hair, then this important new booklet is something you should have. And I'll see that you get it free if you call our toll-free number. The booklet is an honest, straightforward discussion of all the hair replacement techniques, including, of course, our own exclusive strand-by-strand -strand hair system. It covers the good and not-so-good points of toupees and wigs, weaves, the suture process, transplants, and a lot more. It's designed to give you the facts you need to make an intelligent choice about what's best for you. So to get your free copy, no charge, no strings, just call our toll-free number now, and I'll send you the booklet along with a full-color supplement showing before and after photos of real hair club clients. So call now for your free copy. And by the way, I'm not only the hair club president, but I'm also a client. Greetings, Mr. and Mrs. Metropolitan Area. Trader Horn opens its 12th Superstore, this one in Brooklyn, with unbelievable discounts on color TVs, appliances, VCRs, cassette recorders, microwaves, and more, with guaranteed lowest prices or your money back. Shop, compare, then go to Trader Horn's new Superstore, exit 5 off the belt next to Caesars Bazaar, or visit any Trader Horn and see one of the largest displays of brand-name merchandise at incredibly low discount prices. Trader Horn's lowest prices always make news. On the next first run episode of Too Close for Comfort. It, Sarah, there is a difference between us. The difference is outstanding. Too Close for Comfort, 7 p.m. Saturday on Channel 5. Good morning, this is Tom Gregory with late news headlines, sports, and the weather from the Channel 5 newsroom. The international headlines. Both houses of Congress have united in condemning the use of U.S. funds to mine Nicaragua's ports. The House has passed a non-binding resolution that's virtually the same as one approved by the Senate earlier this week. The two measures say no more American dollars should be spent on mining Nicaragua's waters. Before the House cast its vote, sources in Nicaragua reported there were many casualties in the explosions of mines, not in the ports, but near the border with Honduras. The sources say the mines blew up three military trucks. The statements are the first, claiming that anti-Sandinista rebels have started mining roads in Nicaragua in addition to the offshore mining. The head of Nicaragua's army, though, says the mining of his country's harbors apparently has stopped. The Sandinista Army Chief of Staff says 18 mines have exploded in the past month, some of them damaging commercial freighters. In the past few days, though, he says traffic through Nicaragua's ports have been unimpeded. The House has abandoned efforts to funnel an emergency appropriation to El Salvador's government. The White House had claimed the money is needed desperately to combat leftist rebels. Sources in Israel say the hijacking of an Israeli bus has ended with the deaths of two of the four hijackers. Israel's military command says Arab guerrillas had held 35 Israelis aboard the bus hostage as they forced the vehicle to speed toward the Egyptian border. While the bus was on the occupied Gaza Strip, Israeli troops shot out the tires and later rescued the hostages by storming the bus. Tens of thousands of angry steelworkers were set to march through the streets of Paris today in a protest against a government plan to slash jobs in money-losing smokestack industries. About 2,500 police were deployed around the French capital to prevent violence during the march, which was expected to draw an estimated 40,000 steel workers. These top national stories. We pick up, repair, and deliver is Commander Robert Crippen's new motto for the space shuttle. The Challenger is scheduled to return to Earth this morning at 7.09 Eastern Standard Time at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The landing will end a momentous week in which the shuttle's crew plucked a broken satellite from space, repaired it, and put it back in orbit in A1 shape. The special prosecutor investigating Attorney General-designate Edwin Meese is getting a look at documents from another probe. New Jersey Democratic Congressman Donald L. Bosta says materials from the House probe of the transfer of Carter administration papers to the 1980 Reagan campaign are being given to Prosecutor Jacob Stein. The panel investigating the Carter Papers voted Thursday to Grant Stein's request for all documents that relate in any way to Meese. 
The House Armed Services Committee wants to chop a record $19 billion from President Reagan's proposal for defense spending. The panel has endorsed a defense spending increase of 6% after inflation. In the Senate, lawmakers were working through the night on a bill to lower the deficit through a variety of tax increases. A similar measure, one that includes a tax hike on liquor, has already been okayed by the House. But at last count, at least 57 amendments had been pending on the Senate bill, making it unlikely that the Senate would vote on the measure before today. Many of the large airlines are among the at least 44 carriers whose safe operation transportation officials say they're concerned about. The officials refuse to name any of the carriers, but say that some concerns were raised during an inspection blitz of the airline industry. The officials also stress that the problems being examined generally are not of such a nature to pose an immediate safety hazard. Bridges have been washed out and roads closed in many South Dakota towns by lowland flooding that's threatening a dam. Five days of off and on rains took their toll Thursday, causing swollen streams to jump their banks. Analysts say figures on wholesale inflation due out this morning should show an increase of several tenths of a percent over the previous month. That's much faster than the rate for most of last year, but far less than the levels of 1979 and 1980. Striking Las Vegas hotel workers are planning to march up the Strip this weekend, led by farm union head Cesar Chavez. The strike by 17,000 workers is prompting some resorts to set special bargain rates to lure guests. Federal health officials say at least 12 premature babies have died after being given a new intravenous vitamin E supplement. The government says the supplement, e ferrol is being recalled. These local items. Suspended schools chancellor Anthony J. Alvarado, facing three criminal investigations and fighting for his job, has been subpoenaed to testify at disciplinary hearings set to begin next month. An attorney for the Board of Education disclosed the subpoena Thursday while announcing that another allegation of misconduct has been lodged against Alvarado. The new charge alleges that Alvarado and his family took a young Board of Education employee on vacation with them last summer to serve as babysitter and run errands. When they returned, the board alleged, Alvarado arranged for the babysitter to be paid by certifying that the youth had performed Board of Education work. Meanwhile, sources close to the case at a Brooklyn federal grand jury has begun probing Alvarado's activities, including his private life, his actions as chancellor, and previously as superintendent of school district four in East Harlem. Alvarado is also under investigation by the Brooklyn and Manhattan district attorneys. Two federal agencies are investigating claims by the New York City Transit Authority that 851 Grumman buses it removed from service two months ago are unsafe. The General Accounting Office, the investigative arm of Congress, had technicians at the Brooklyn Army Terminal earlier this week, Republican Guy Molinari of Staten Island said Thursday. The Urban Mass Transportation Administration had earlier examined some of the buses. The inability of the Transit Authority to certify the fleet as safe raises the question whether the other 4,800 Grumman buses operating around the country are safe. That a quote by Molinari. UMTA spokesman said their inspections, combined with interviews with transit officials and inspections of similar buses in other cities, turned up no indication the Grumman buses are unsafe. The city's latest cop of the month is a robot, but it received a plaque and a salute from Police Commissioner Benjamin Ward just like its human counterparts. RMI-3 and nine human police officers received the citations in a ceremony Thursday for their part in ending a violent 20-hour standoff in upstate Elmira between police and two heavily armed suspects. One police officer and both suspects were killed. Now turning to sports. In the first games of the NHL playoffs, the Islanders bowed to the Caps 3-2, the Nordiques outskated the Canadiens 4-2, Minnesota tops St. Louis 2-1, and Edmonton skated past Calgary 5-2. On the boards in the NBA, Kansas City put the Spurs to San Antonio 114-102. The Suns just barely overtook Dallas 119-118, Utah breezed by San Diego 113-94, and the Warriors fell to the Supersonics 105-100. In American League Baseball, our Yankees were held scoreless by the Twins, 3 to nothing. The Tigers mauled Texas, 9-4, and the Angels chalked up a 3-2 win over the A's. In the only National League activity, San Diego outslugged Atlanta, 6-1. A look at the weather. Current temperature reading at 46 degrees, humidity 91%, barometer at 30.1 inches, and it's on the rise. Mostly clear and cool early this morning is the word from the weatherman, the low in the low to mid-40s. Later today, some sunshine, followed by increasing cloudiness, mild, with a high 60 to 65. 
Saturday, cloudy and cool, same, some drizzle at times, with a high temperature again, 50 to 55. Repeating the current reading, 46 degrees. And there you have the late news headlines, sports, and weather from the Channel 5 newsroom. Good morning, Tom Gregory reporting. When the world should all be sleeping, and a melody comes creeping, it's no cabaret, but the milkman's madonna. They say that New York is the city that never sleeps, and we're just getting warmed up on America's original all-night music show. This is Marty Wilson with a personal invitation to turn on that radio for the Milkman's Matinee on WNEW 1130 on your AM dial. WNEW, where the melody lingers on. On the next first run episode of Too Close for Comfort. It, Sarah, there is a difference between us. The difference is outstanding. Too Close for Comfort, 7 p.m. Saturday on Channel 5. Contemporary man faces the problem of loneliness. We are lonesome because as people living in large metropolitan areas, we are isolated from our roots and those with whom we grew up. We are forced to live in anonymity since it is impossible to establish an I-thou relationship with everyone we come in contact with. Mobility makes it difficult to maintain lasting friendships and we are compelled to limit ourselves to acquaintances that we can not always rely upon or unconditionally confide in. The small apartments in the cities do not lend to living with one or both grandparents, who too are lonesome. They are lonesome beca either because they are living far away from their children for various reasons, or their children are, uh, are living away from their parents because their jobs demand it. Many grandparents are placed in nursing homes where they are rarely visited by their relatives because time and distance become an obstacle of communication. This alienation between ourselves and those we know creates feelings of anguish, anxiety, and depression. If we move to the suburbs, we are wary of establishing too close of a social circle. The high cost of living makes it limit our, us limit our social contacts with our neighbors or friends because of its demands. We are victims of the 20th century, victims of a technological civilization that has reached staggering heights of scientific progress, but fallen to abysmal depths through its infinite problems that we can neither solve nor cope. But it isn't only the senior citizens and the parents who experience this alienation from their fellow man. The children likewise suffer from a lack of peer acceptance for various reasons and feel a void in their lives. They have, like their parents, become class conscience and race conscience. The loneliness becomes more acute when the mother and father are divorced, are working, and neither parent is home to greet them when they return from school or play. The loneliness is so pervasive that children abandoned in institutions die before they reach the, their first year of age, when no one is there to comfort them when they cry or to hold them in their arms. All of us, I am sure, have experienced this loneliness and estrangement in one form or another during the course of our lifetime. That is one of the reasons that contemporary man needs God in his life today as a source of strength and reinforcement more than ever before. We cannot easily turn to our relatives in time of crisis if they are not there. We cannot turn to our friends if in reality we have none. We cannot so much as rationalize or rely on positive thinking if everything around us is, looks so irrational and negative. We can, however, turn to the Lord who is a part of our psychological makeup whether we realize it or not. As Aretas, the Stoic philosopher, once said, it was quoted by St. Paul, in him we live and move and have our being. We don't have to be alone in this world or be led to despair or contemplate suicide when God cares so much for man. He wants to visit us in our trials and afflictions. He came to heal the brokenhearted and give us that peace that passeth all understanding. All he asks of us is faith. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God who said, Greater love hath no man than to lay down his life 
for his friends. If God then is our friend, we never have to fear of being alone. Thank you. This is television station WNEW-TV, Channel 5, New York. Owned and operated by Metro Media Incorporated, with transmitter atop the World Trade Center and executive offices and studios located at 205 East 67th Street in New York City. WNEW-TV operates on an assigned frequency of 76 to 82 megahertz as authorized by the Federal Communications Commission. Some programs and portions of programs presented by this station have been recorded. WNEW-TV's entire broadcast schedule is a copyrighted original compilation work. No recording, retransmission, or other use may be made of WNEW-TV's programming without the express prior written consent of Metro Media Incorporated. Good night.